Hey, we're a church of excellence. <laughs> Never mind, I can't tell you what a church of excellence really is, but why not strive for it? Well, let me tell you, there's a very good reason why not to strive to be a church of excellence. And in this episode, we're going to tell you exactly what that is. Here we go. I was out doing a uh, pastoral team. Uh, it wasn't a retreat, but it, we were doing a team meeting. We're doing a weekend together. And so we're meeting with the pastors and staff on a, uh, uh, I think it was on a Friday morning. And in the process of uh, just, uh, you know, I'm up on the right whiteboard, you know, just jotting things down here along the way. And I said, uh, somebody said in there, well, we really desire to be a church of excellence. That's kind of our purpose. And I said, you know, I, I, would, I would ditch that. They kind of went, what? Yeah, don't be trying to be a church of excellence. Well, why? Well, because really, um, there's all sorts of reasons why you don't want to be a church of excellence. You really want to be a church of improvement. And so today we're going to talk to you about uh, why you should not strive to be a church of excellence, even though that sounds good, mm -hmm. but really it's not going to deliver for you what you want. It, it sounds counterintuitive to say don't be a church of excellence, yeah. but it really will help you moving forward if you'll strive to be a church of improvement. Well, it's been interesting to be in the church circles and you interact with people from different churches and how they'll even comment about other churches. Oh, wow, they do, they're do they a church of excellence or they do, you know, they do things you know, with excellence. Yeah. But, uh, you know, the reason, and this really is the first reason of why you should not be a church of excellence, the reason that uh, you shouldn't do that is because excellence is subjective. Completely subjective. So a person who's got that opinion of another church, for example, is right. just, well, oh, that church, they, man, they're a church of excellence. They do things excellent. Well, that's their opinion. Yeah. That's their perception. Uh, what what you, Dick Hardy, thinks is excellent, I, Jonathan Hardy, might, might not, not think, think is excellent, yeah. and vice versa. And so, you know, whenever you say, well, we're going to try to be a, a church of excellence, it's all subjective, and therefore, the target is subjective. Yeah. So, you know, as you're striving for that, you know, you the pastor may say, oh, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's definitely, you know, we're, we're definitely excellent. And then someone else may say, oh, man, they do stuff so sloppy, yeah. you yeah. know, and so that's why it's like, well, we can't. We we can't just have a target that's a subjective target yeah. because then you just you know you know here's a here's a comparison I ma I make and gets me in trouble all the time but hey well, why not <laughs> most people if you ask them about their kitchen is your kitchen clean or not clean most people will say their kitchen's clean and yet not all kitchens are at the same level of cleanliness. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing with uh, with excellence. Yeah. It's here, it's here, it's here, it's here. But and everybody thinks differently. So don't allow yourself. Don't put the church yeah. in a position to for a subjective view of something. That's why yeah. you want to continually work to be a church of exactly. improvement yeah. because improvement measure that. is going from here to here. To hear those are things you, as yeah. John says, that yeah. you really can measure. Yeah. You look back and you can say, okay, did we improve? Yes or no? How do we know? Yeah. And yeah. You know, the other thing, Jonathan, I think uh, excellence up implies arriving. Yeah. And, and really, if you think, uh, who arrives? Right. I mean, or, you know, if someone does think they've arrived, mm -hmm. yeah. What, I mean, we say, you're probably in trouble. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm, uh, you know, as the dad, I'm older than you. If I think I've arrived, yeah. I'm done. Yeah. If you think, and somebody older than me thinks, I'll tell you, some of the greatest uh, people that I admire so much are 70 and 80 year old people who will say things like, I've got so much to learn. Yeah. I've got so much more improving to do. And if your church will do that, mm -hmm. uh, you're going to see great things happen. Yeah. Excellence implies arriving, and we never arrive. Right. Yeah, I mean, you think about it. You think about the Apostle Paul. You think about Peter, the disciples, all those that that were the starting of the of the of uh, the early church. Uh -huh. Did they arrive? Yeah. Nobody arrives. Yeah. You talk to mega church pastors. Had they arrived? Nobody's arrived. Yeah. So anyway, kind yeah. of get on the high horse. I know. Well, and then on the heels of that, really, excellence can breed arrogance. Oh, so once exactly. you start to once you start to get to the point where you feel like maybe we've arrived. Yeah. 
then you know you kind of think I got it. You're kind of yeah. the elite yeah. here because not many people can arrive, yeah. and, and that is a loser, yeah. loser, loser. Yeah. So the, it, just the whole issue of excellence won't get you to where you think yeah. it's going to get you. Yeah. Improvement will. Yeah. So those are the things we want to give you. Just uh, uh, the, the suggestion that excellence uh, is subjective. Excellence implies arriving, and excellence can breed arrogance. You don't want any of that in your church. Yeah. You want improvement yeah. in your church. Yeah. So and so, I'd encourage you to look for ways to improve. How can we? Incidentally, by improving, you're going to make things better. Yeah. And so by any person's definition of excellence, it's going to continue to be getting better. better all but along. it's all under the guise of improvement. It's all under the value of improvement. We value improvement. Yep. We don't value excellence because of because improvement can be measured. And exactly. so if we do those things, that's going to be good. So uh, go ahead. Well, uh, did we mention the uh, the podcast five and six? No. Uh, you know, really would encourage you to go back and take a look at episodes five and six. Nine steps to helping people buy into change. You know, when, when you're going to be improving, you're going to be changing things. Mm-hmm. And you need people to buy into that improvement. Again, <laughs> if you've arrived, yeah. if you're excellent, you don't need to change anything. Right. And everybody needs to change all the time. So I would encourage you. It's a two-part series, episodes five and six, that I encourage you to go take a look at. Yep. Uh, and then also make sure to uh, hop into the master class and go uh, check that out if you have not yet done so. This is the four secrets pastors can use to lead at the next level. And when you do these things, this is going to help you to continue to uh, lead at a higher level. And part of that is leading the church through change like yep. you're talking about, leading in moments of where we need to improve and casting the vision and getting people on board. All that stuff can happen when you're leading at another level. And so that's why these four secrets master class that I put together is going to be very helpful for you in doing that. You can just simply go to leaders.church slash secrets. Yep. Again, that's leaders.church slash secrets. Sign up, get access right away, check it out, and hopefully you can start your way toward, toward improving personally as a leader as well. Anything else? I, I just want to encourage you. Be a church of improvement. Yeah. Ditch the thought of being a church of excellence. And when you become a church of improvement, God is going to do some amazing things. It's good. Thanks very much for hanging out with us today. Make it a great one and be blessed. Hey, Jonathan here. Real quick before you go. Everything in your ministry rises and falls on your leadership. So investing in your leadership is essential to staying healthy and growing the ministry. And that's why I want to invite you to join us inside the Leaders.Church membership. This online streaming service for pastors gives you access to more than 300 videos plus training material to level up your leadership and improve your ministry skills. If you'd like to do that, I want to invite you to go to leaders.church slash boost. Again, that's leaders.church slash boost. Well, thanks again for joining us on the Church Tips Podcast. We'll look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you.